Hi everyone, I'm McKenna and I'm the owner of Murder by the Book in Houston, Texas. I am so, so, so excited tonight um, to be moderating, emceeing, and just involved in a legendary event. We have um, Peter Lovesy here with us to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Wobble to Death, but we are also joined by quite a few luminaries um, and people in the publishing industry to toast his success. Um, while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, since there's a little bit of a, a lull in um, people joining YouTube, knowing the event is starting, we're actually going to do a little quiz. Now, um, keep track of your answers. Don't post them in the in the chat on YouTube. Obviously, you can have questions there. You can you can chat amongst yourselves, but don't spoil the trivia quiz because there actually is a prize. Um, we have five questions. And the first three people to email Soho Press with all five answers will win a Peter Lovesy paperback of their choice. Um, and you just need to submit the answers to lovesycontest at sohopress.com. Now, John from Murder by the Book is behind the scenes. He's going to be actually typing in questions and comments there um, in the chat. And he will type all these questions in. So if you miss one, just check the YouTube chat and they will all be there. I will repeat them though, just, just to make sure that everyone um, gets them. As I said, there are five questions total. The first three people to email Soho Press with all five answers correct will win a Peter Lovesy paperback of their choice. And the answers will be submitted to Lovesy Contest, uh, excuse me, Lovesy Contest at SohoPress.com. So the first question is, the 12.05 a.m. trundled out of Highbury and Islington uh, Station at along the line. So this is the first line of which book? The 12.05 a.m. trundled out of Highbury and Islington Station and along the line. And there is a clue, which I think is a pretty solid clue. It should help you out a lot. It, uh, this book is 50 years old. If you need a hint, there's a picture of the 50th anniversary edition of Wobbled to Death right here next to me. Signed copy is available. Again, the link will be in the comments. It's a pretty beautiful edition that they've done to celebrate this book. But number two, you're not getting any help from me. The next first sentence of another book is, a man stood thigh deep in water, motionless, absorbed, unaware of what was drifting towards him. Again, that first line is, a man stood thigh deep in water, motionless, absorbed, unaware of what was drifting towards him. The clue is that this is the first of a series. Everyone doing okay? All right. The third first line of a book question is, when I was nine, I fell in love with a girl of 20 called Barbara who killed herself. Again, that's when I was nine, I fell in love with a girl of 20 called Barbara who killed herself. And the clue on this one is a strong drink. All right, question number four. 1130 at night, sweaty in his evening suit and shattered after a heavy night playing Rachmaninoff, Mel Farron plodded out of the artist exit on the south side of the Royal Festival Hall. All right, here we go again. First line is, 11.30 at night, sweaty in his evening suit and shattered after a heavy night playing Rachmaninoff, Mel Farron plodded out of the artist exit on the south side of the Royal Festival Hall. The clue for this is that it sounds like dental work. And then um, the last question that we have, the last trivia, the last first line of a book is, the city of Bath isn't all about roaming plum Roman plumbing and Georgian architecture. Excuse me, I will repeat that. The city of Bath isn't all about Roman plumbing and Georgian architecture. And the clue for this one is, it's a winner. So, if you're tuning in late, you should be able to find those three trivia questions, excuse me, five trivia questions in the comments. Um, and the first three people to email Soho Press with all five answers correct will win a Peter Lovesy paperback of their choice. You can submit all the answers to lovesycontest 
at SohoPress.com. So I'm hoping in this little warm up trivia time, we've had lots of people join us. Um, if you missed the trivia and you wanna do it later, you can always come back. This video will be up on YouTube uh, a little bit after it's over, it processes, and then it'll be available for rewatch as many times as you would like. But now for the, the star of the show. I am so excited to be uh, hosting this event tonight uh, with Peter Lovesy. I've been a huge fan of his for a very long time. And um, one of my all time favorite books, I actually pulled out my first edition of False Inspector Do here. Um, we're doing a countdown to Christmas uh, recommendation videos at Murder by the Book. And today's, because I wanted to time it with this, today's recommendation video, um, which you can also watch on YouTube is um, the False Inspector Do. So uh, make sure to check that out. And if you haven't read it, you've just read the Peter Diamond series or the Sergeant Cribs, certainly check out some of his standalone. So Peter Lovesy is the author of over 50 books, 40 novels, including the Peter Diamond, Sergeant Cribb and Birdie Prince of Wales series, as well as short story collections, anthologies and works of nonfiction. He is one of only three living writers to have received both the Mystery Writers of America Grand Master Award and the British Crime Writers Association Diamond Dagger Award for Lifetime Achievement. The others, if you want to know, are John Le Carre and Sarah Paretsky. His standalone novel, The False Inspector Do, is number 27 on the Mystery Writers of America's list of 100 greatest crime novels of all time. We are here tonight to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the publication of his first novel, Wobble to Death. Peter, are you out there? Yes. Oh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hi. Hi, we can see you. Hello. How are you this evening? <laughs> well, great. And, and thank you for that <laughs> wonderful introduction. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I reckon I'm going to be speechless at various points during this evening. I hope that doesn't ruin your program. <laughs> no, no, I think it's I think it's the whole point is to make you speechless. You've you've uh -huh. written so many words. I, I think it's time for us to celebrate everything you've done. Um, so we're going to be joined this evening by some pretty special people. I'm not going to um, give it away. I, we're just going to we're just going to introduce and surprise as we go. Um, but the first one who is joining us to to talk a little about a little bit about you and and maybe make you speechless herself is Louise Penny. So Louise, if you'd like to join us, I'll get you introduced. Hello, Louise. Hi, hi, Hello, McKenna. Louise. Hi, Peter. Wonderful to see you. <laughs> so Lu Louise Penny is the number one New York Times and Globe and Mail best-selling author of the Chief Inspector Armand Gamache novels. She has won numerous awards, including a CWA Dagger and the Agatha Award five times, and was a finalist for the Edgar Award for Best Novel. So I'm going to duck out for just a minute and let Louise and Peter uh, uh, have a little toast. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Peter, thank you for, for inviting me to be part of this. It means so much. I mean, this is wobble to death, if in case anybody is wondering. Oh. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I picked it up in anticipation of, uh, of this evening. And of course, I'd read it years ago. Oh, my God, what a great book. How dare you write such a great first novel? I mean, it just, it just, you just burst out of the gate. It is fantastic. And I love the... Um, uh, you, your author's note at the very end, the essay you wrote, and I won't go into it because you might be talking a little bit about some of, you know, the the um, the birth of this particular book, and then obviously your your career. Um, I mean, you are a magnificent writer, and I'm I'm not going to. We're here because I think we all know that. What I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, is is what a fine man you are. Oh. <laughs> you, you are you know, you're remarkable. I mean, I frankly, I wouldn't be up at midnight in London doing this unless you were. <laughs> but, but you are. You never fail to write me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know, when I get a good review and you know about it. When a new book comes out, you are always writing to congratulate me. And you did that. It's one thing to do it now when, you know, a number of people know who I am. You did that right from the get-go when nobody knew who I was. Nobody cared about Louise Penny, oh, but come you on. did. I, I, I don't no, think it's quite, quite true. <laughs> no, well, it is, and, I, and I'll tell you, and I, and I know you remember this um, in terms of your generosity and your kindness. It was the first time we met. Do you remember that? Um, it was probably at um, 
Malice Domestic, was it? Actually, no. It was oh. at the CWA uh, Dagger Awards. Oh, right. When I was shortlisted for the debut Dagger. My book, first book hadn't come out yet. I was just shortlisted. Oh. Turned out I didn't win. But I had, was in this room and I was uh, intimidated. I, I was overwhelmed. I was anxious. And on top of that, my husband, Michael, and I were put at your table. So now I'm like speechless because Peter Lovesy is sitting across from, from us. And you couldn't have been more gracious. You, oh, you okay. made me feel as though I belonged. And I have to tell you for someone, uh, you know, and maybe uh, Eli who, who won your best first novel uh, award this this year uh, knows what that feels like to to be a newcomer in uh, among a bunch of people who who are already published and very prominent and you made me feel as though as though I belonged even though I hadn't been published yet and not only me you made Michael my husband feel welcome and that's that is you know an act of generosity and kindness that I have never forgotten. Um, and so I want to toast not just a remarkable writer, but you know, at the end of the day, when all of us one day will just, we'll just, you know, hang up the pen. I think we all want to be remembered for our writing for sure, but as, as wonderful human beings and, and you are, and that's why I'm here after midnight in London is to tell you how much you have meant to me not simply as a mentor and, and wonderful writer, but, but as a great human being. So with, with Diet Coke, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I toast you, Peter Lovesy, and thank you so much for all that you have given to crime writers, you. to authors, and to me. And I also want to congratulate, you know, it, it means so much that you have helped create a Best First Novel Award, and I want to congratulate Eli, and I know you'll be yes. talking more about him, but with his great win. So thank you, Peter. Well, thank, thank you for those wonderful words. I, I'm, I'm touched um, and, and especially touched that you're in London, not in Canada and that, uh, <laughs> and that you've stayed up this late. That's, that really is be above and beyond. I, I, I thank you very much for that. Uh, and and, and for, you're awake too. <laughs> for all the kind things you said. Yes, I, 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 as I said, I, I'm going to be speechless. And there are a lot of other people waiting to say even, even more wonderful things about you. So thank I you for allowing me to be part of this. I'll need to drink more of this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really Louise, this. <laughs> Louise, thank you so much for joining us. It was so nice to see you, albeit for a couple minutes. And um, all best, have a good evening. And we are going to move on to that uh, first novel contest you mentioned. So. Um, I'm actually going to introduce Juliet Grames. There she is. She is the Soho Press Associate Publisher and the editor of the Soho Crime Imprint to talk a little bit about this, uh, this award. So I have had the very great privilege of editing the last 10 novels that Peter has published. And um, he's a joy to work with, as Louise said, as anyone will tell you. So last year when we were looking at this anniversary of Wobble to Death, which we were able to reissue and have on the Soho list, we thought we really wanted to celebrate uh, Peter's golden anniversary of, of crime fiction writing here. So I reached out to Peter and I asked him, what can we do to celebrate you, Peter? We want to throw you a gala. And he said, um, sorry, Peter, I'm going to tell them what you said. He said, oh, it's really not my style. I don't, I, I don't want everyone paying attention to me. And then I made him do this anyway. So thank you for being here tonight, Peter, and humoring me. <laughs> But he said, he thought about it for a while and wrote back to me and said, this may be too far out there, but I was first published because I won a first novel contest. And if we could do it, could we possibly run a first novel contest where an unpublished writer might get a publishing contract with Soho? And we loved the idea so much. That is what we did. Um, we announced last year at BoucherCon where Peter was the guest of honor. Um, and, and we opened up submissions for the until June of this year. So there were about six months during which we collected more than 200 submissions, really stellar novels by unpublished 
crime fiction writers, many of whom I have no doubt will go on to be published crime fiction writers because we had such a wonderful time at Soho talking about these books, um, dealing with the judging panel and deciding how we were going to create a list of finalists to give to Peter. And then Peter himself was generous enough with his time to do the actual judging. Um, as a result, we announced on December 1st that we uh, that Peter had selected Eli Craner's novel Don't Know Tough as the winner of this um, contest. And we are so excited to be publishing it. And I, I hope Peter will talk a little bit now about uh, the contest and why he wanted to um, host it. And also we would love to introduce Eli. Tonight is, is a night that we get to present him to all of you because we're so, so, so excited to be bringing this very special novel about a small Arkansas town and a very troubled high school senior who's a football player and the coach who thinks that he can save this troubled young man and the murder that ends up tearing the town apart on the eve of the playoffs. Um, so thank you, Peter, will you, will you tell us a little bit about how you came to the idea of the contest and how you picked Eli's book? Well, I must give credit to my wife, Jax, for, for, for the idea of the contest. I said to her, what on earth are we going to do? And, uh, and she came up with the idea. So I, I must really thank her for that. Um, and I'm delighted that it, that, it, that it happened. I'm so pleased that it was taken up in such a big way. And 200 people um, entering, 200 people who finished a novel, each one of those is an achiever. And each one of those people even the ones who didn't get to the final stages should be thrilled that they completed a novel and were able to enter it for a competition. That's an achievement in itself. Um, and I know that uh, you were thrilled by the high standard. You just, you just said so. Um, I, I'm, I'm confident that, that um, more than one of these novels will get published. Um, finally, they sent me a shortlist and, and then it was my turn to agonize. Um, now, each of the stories that I was sent looked like a winner to me at, 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 when I read them for the first time. I read them again um, and I, I thought a lot about it. Um, the three finalists were Eli Cranor with Don't Know Tough, Catherine Hendricks with Hard Ways, and Dan Weaver with The Prince of Thieves. Now, in the end, I, I chose Eli's Don't Know Tough. It, it's a powerful, deeply moving story set in Arkansas about a high school football player with a desperately troubled home life and the coach who wants to save him from a murder rat on the eve of the playoffs. Now, I was gripped. Now, Eli is a former professional football player and high school football coach. It turns out that just like me 50 years ago, he's a teacher who writes in his spare time. And, and this is really the moment I, I should be handing over the check for $10,000 and contract to publish the book. What a pity this is only virtual. But I promise you, Eli, the cash and the contract are real and will soon be in your hands. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the winner of the first crime novel contest Eli Craner. Peter, thank you so much for that introduction and for choosing this, this manuscript. Um, I can't tell you how much it means to me because this book, I, I, in the letter that you and I shared before this night, I told you I've written a lot of other manuscripts, but, but this book, um, I was the coach in many ways that, that this coach was in a small town right in the foothills of the Ozarks here in Arkansas. Um, and the boys I came across, um, the scars they had, the, the stories they had, it's what gave birth to this book and to this manuscript. And it's why about five years now down the road, this one has collected over 200 rejections. Uh, as I've tried to find a home. And so the fact that on this stage and in this setting is the place where it gets to finally find an audience means more to me than you will ever know. Um, and so I am so thankful for you and a fan of yours. And Juliet was so kind to send me Wobble to Death. 
and Sergeant Crib had me laughing and uh, and and heart on every page. So I, I'm so so thankful for that. I've got to thank Juliet as well for being the spark plug to this whole thing and just being like a a positivity ninja. Um, Bronwyn and the whole Soho team, thank you so much. My agent Alexa Stark, who right off the bat uh, went to bat for me, uh, that means the world. Um, author friends, Ace Atkins, William Boyle, Jack Butler, Alex Taylor, and all of my Arkansas writing, uh, Arkansas Writers Drinking Club. Thank you so much, guys, for that. Uh, my writing mentor is Johnny Wink, and Johnny, you're the man that, that is, you're the reason I'm writing today, a creative writing class 10 years ago when I was the, the quarterback uh, of the college football team, and I was taking a creative writing class that, that you, you led me here. Uh, Mike Sutton, you're the best friend a man could have. Thanks to my mom for loving every single thing I've ever written. And thanks to my dad for never liking anything that I have ever written. <laughs> Y'all were a good balance to get, to get me here. Um, and last, I have to thank my wife, um, Mallory, who she was there with me when we were in the foothills of the Ozarks coaching those boys. And she was at night around the tables when I'd come home broken trying to figure out what to do. Uh, so she was there when this book was, was just coming into my head. And then she was there when I came into this office and tried to get down all those feelings and all those thoughts. And she was outside of these doors with you know, our kids trying to figure out you know, how to make life happen. Um, and so baby, I can't tell you how much I love you and how much I am thankful for you. Thank you all. Oh, that's terrific. And, and I'm gonna um, raise a glass to you, Eli. Uh, a toast to the winner of the competition. Hey, well done, brilliant. And I'm looking out, I'm looking out for a copy of the book, signed, please, when, it, when it's published. And um, I shall also be following your career with interest. Thank Cheers. you so much, Peter. Cheers to you. And I know as a bookseller, I can't wait to read it too. It sounds fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Eli. I'm gonna go ahead and move here to another um, well-known uh, author. We're happy to be joined by Jeffrey Deaver. Um, Jeffrey Deaver is the internationally number one best-selling author of the Lincoln Rhyme series and many others. Um, his books are sold in 150 countries and have been translated into over 25 languages. He has sold 50 million books worldwide. Jeff, I'm going to leave it to you to, to toast Peter. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, gosh, what an honor this is. Uh, and congratulations uh, to uh, Eli. Um, it's funny, in this Zoom world, uh, this remote world we're living, I actually could not stop myself. I was applauding, although my mute button was on, when um, we announced your win. So congratulations to that. Um, oh my goodness, I am so honored to have the opportunity to uh, lift a glass remotely to a man I have admired so much for so many years. And I'm particularly honored to, to have been asked to write the introduction to Wobble to Death, a book I read a long, long time ago. And it was as exciting to reread as it was um, so many years ago. Um, Peter, you're what I have always aspired to be and still aspire to be, a Renaissance man in the world of letters. Um, there's just no end to the variety of what you've written and no end to the quantity too. And uh, if you'll forgive me a little bit, I'm sure uh, others will talk on some of the details, but <clears throat> you've done the uh, Crib Thackeray series, eight books in that. Wobble was the first one. Uh, there's the, uh, the Birdie, Prince of Wales series. Uh, there's of course the wonderful Peter Diamond series and your, uh, you know, your, your standalones uh, and your nonfiction, nonfiction books about athletics primarily, I believe. And if I recall, you said at one time you are a self-confessed uh, sports nut, uh, and that love of competition surely comes out in Wobble. Um, what I want to say tonight, and I, I will keep it brief, there's so many wonderful people here, uh, far more articulate than I, I'm sure. Um, what I want to say, though, is that you were a teacher, of course, for many years. You changed lives, many lives, in such a wonderful way doing that. But in a way you don't know, you're a teacher in your books, too, because I have learned so much, 
many mechanical things from writing and also many, I guess I call it spiritual things, the heart you put into your writing. Um, Wobble to Death is a, uh, I mean, you might say a golden age mystery falls into that category. And yet it is much more than that. It's about uh, the soul of the competitors. Uh, it's about the, um, uh, their frame of mind when we see these sports, which uh, to us might look like just a foot race today, but back then they were massive competitions. And toward the end of the book, um, we can see that the age, uh, let's call it the golden age of this sport is waning a bit. And uh, it's, it's quite heartfelt. I was quite moved by that. And uh, I wanna read a very brief passage from the book because it was so, uh, so moving. <clears throat> And these are two, two observers of the, uh, the race, uh, former, former runners, they're past their time now. And they say, one says to, to another, uh, there was a time in the palmy days when they'd have thrown sovereigns, the old man reminisced. No chance of that tonight. They treat you according to the pocket possibilities these days. And this ain't the well greased contingent. Now at Brompton, 15 years back, they lined up their carriages in pairs alongside the track. They was the gentry then. They watched us, princes and peers. Uh, that is beautiful writing. That's a style I aspire to uh, attain. And I could talk about all your uh, awards, uh, but I'm sure that's it's been touched on. Um, but I will tell you one consequence of reading Wobble um, to Death again, I. Um, like everyone else, I've been sitting at home, or like most people, I've been sitting at home, and I got kind of tired of being on my bum all day, housebound, and I, uh, I read this book, and it inspired me to return to um, a sport that I practiced a long time ago. It's called race walking. Some people call it power walking, and I suspect that those who wobbled back then did that as well. It's heel to toe, and you move very quickly, and you move your hands back and forth, and uh, I, I just, uh, so I got out, and I said, I'm going to do this again. I've got some little, little tiny hand weights. And, uh, you know, the fact is, I, I look like an inebriated camel when I do the, the walk. But nonetheless, I'm getting two miles in a day. And if I could do a close up, I could show you on my Fitbit, but I, 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 I won't uh, try to do that. Um, so I guess I could say you, Peter Lovesy, inspired me not only to write, inspired me not only to look at my style and my content, but you. <laughs> Inspired me to wobble, so oh. thank you for that. and I will now lift a glass to you with my oh. Oh. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. That's that's wonderful, and and um, I was just staggered when when I heard that you were willing to write a, a introduction to that book. I um, I've admired you for so long, um, and. I was sort of knocked out by it, and and thank you for for the wonderful job you did. It was it was a marvelous introduction, and it, it it has helped people, I think, to understand what's going on in the in the book in a in a very exceptional way. So thank you very much for all the kind things you've said. Um, I I'd like to toast you. <laughs> Here's to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Cheers to all. Good evening, Jeff. Thank you so much. And um, your wonderful introduction can be found in this lovely signed edition. I just want to show everyone Soho actually shipped books to Peter to sign. So these are really delightful, beautiful um, hard hardbacks. And if you want to read um, Jeff's introduction, I believe that John has dropped a link in the comments for order. Okay. Good evening, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. So, we're going to move on to um, Michael Z. Lewin and Liza Cody, who are together, but we are going to start with Michael. So Michael Z. Lewin's mystery career began with the Albert Sampson private detective series set in Indianapolis, where Mike grew up. He lives in Bath, and his most recent book is Alien Quartet. Good evening, Michael. Hello, and hello, you all. Hello, Peter. Um, I'm just wanting to say, I mean, I've had the pleasure of knowing Peter for nearly 35 years now, and other people have been and will speak about the quality, wit, and invention of his work. So I thought that I would use my time 
uh, to share a couple of stories about touring with Peter in the U.S. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> there are many available <laughs> stories, I mean. Uh, we discovered as early as 1990 that touring to meet readers and introduce our work uh, was more fun done with a friend or friends than alone. Uh, and we've toured together a number of times, including often with Liza. Um, on such expeditions, uh, Peter has been unfailingly helpful and constructive, as you might well expect, because he's such a gent. But you might not know that he, in certain situations, is also adventurous. Uh, I'm thinking first of a time when we were in Terre Haute, Indiana. Now, what would mystery writers do with their spare time in Terre Haute? Uh, go to the famous federal penitentiary? No. Uh, we went to the Larry Bird restaurant. And it's closed now, but back in the day, uh, they had a basket with netting. And they invited people waiting for their tables to try their luck at shooting free throws uh, while, yes, while they were waiting. And Peter, though not uh, an experienced basketball guy, <laughs> stepped up to the line, stepped up to the line and took several shots at, oh, hang on, this is your celebration today. Uh, every one of Peter's shots went in swish. I was there, that's my story. Um, <laughs> Another time we were in Kansas City uh, and had some spare, a spare evening. And Liza and I asked Peter whether he'd ever been to a comedy club and he hadn't. And so we undertook to introduce him to the experience of a comedy club, which turned out to include uh, his learning why one doesn't sit in the front row unless you want to be in the show. Uh, another time still, uh, Peter and I were in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we'd done our, our presentation and it was a balmy night. We went out for a walk and, and we heard some music and I suggested we head over to wherever, whatever was going on. And we did indeed find uh, a big civic auditorium where there was a concert going on. Come on, Pete. I may have been the first person ever to call him Pete. I don't know. Um, let's go in and see what happens. And he was hesitant at minor details, no tickets, that kind of thing. Anyway, we just walked in looking like we belonged and ended up standing at the back row of the finale sequence of a concert with thousands of people celebrating their local hero, the rapper Lil Bow Wow. Uh, I believe he's gone on to be grown up Bow Wow or something like that these days. Uh, anyway, Peter is wonderful to tour with. He's been uh, a wonderful writer, a great friend, and I'm delighted to toast you, Peter. Cup of tea, of course, what else? Uh, cheers, mate. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, cheers. Bow well. <laughs> great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for that. I do recall each of those occasions. <laughs> but, but I and I think you've spared me um, a few other tour stories. You've been very generous and very kind. How much time have you got? <laughs> <laughs> and I think we also are going to have a toast by Liza Cody. Um, so Liza Cody, who was born in London, began her writing career with the Anna Lee series. She now lives in Bath and her latest novel is Gift or Theft. Liza, how are you tonight? Ah, it isn't tonight, it's isn't the morning. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you to it, and I will be back shortly. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Um, well, hi, Peter, and congratulations. 
and um, over 35 years of um, a wonderful friendship. Um, but I'm here because I live in Bath, um, as does Peter's wonderful, soft, cuddly, sentimental, <laughs> and um, <laughs> sensitive hero, Peter Diamond. Now, for the past few, few years, with every new Diamond book, Peter comes to Bath to, head, to lead a Diamond walk uh, around the city, taking in the sites which are pertinent to that particular Diamond story. And these are wonderfully informative and very, very entertaining uh, tours. Um, I don't know in the States if you would ever want to come over and join one of these. They're absolutely terrific. Um, well, I always intend, um, basically I'm supposed to be part of the crowd wrangling team, um, but actually I stay for the sheer fun of it. And that's the sort of sight of Peter striding around Bath like a rock star, uh, followed by um, a mismatched gaggle of, well, very devoted fans. Um, and sometimes the fun is not intended. And there was one lovely occasion when Peter stopped to talk, and we all gathered around him, and we were right outside Bath Abbey, beautiful, beautiful old building. And Peter started his talk, we were all listening carefully, and then it was 11 o'clock and suddenly Peter found himself competing with 10 18th century church bells in full <laughs> peel. And it was, I think, the first time I ever saw Peter <laughs> defeated by circumstances. And we had to sort of trek off and find some place. Actually, it had to be quite a long way away where he could be heard. Um, but one thing I've noticed about these walks is that um, I've actually um, identified several members of the, of the Jane Austen Society. This is Jane Austen who wrote Pride and Prejudice. Pride and, Prejudice. and of course, Bath was one of um, her cities as well. And I noticed these people from the Jane Austen Society who have joined Peter's audience and follow him around devotedly. And I'm beginning to wonder if the deeply sensitive chief detective superintendent, Peter Diamond, is now modern Bath's Mr. Darcy. And this is, you know, food for thought. Um, I know who I'd choose, but anyway, I need to think a bit more about it. Well, this year, Peter would have come with the finisher, but of course, events were overtaken because of you know virus-related in incidents, and so um, we didn't see him. And what I want to say is, we really miss you, Peter. Get the damn vaccine and come back soon. And oh. lots of love to you. And I also, being a Brit, toast you in tea. Oh, thank you, thank you, Liza. Congratulations, love. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you um, both. Can I just say um, that, that Mike and Liza are my, my secret research assistants in Bath. And um, frequently when I, when I can't get there, as I can't, th this year has been hopeless, obviously. And um, at other times, it's quite a long drive from where I live now. Um, I, I've asked them for help with this and that. And, and uh, the, the, the latest time they, they almost got arrested because it was a matter of going <laughs> behind the uh, circus, the, the famous, um, one of the famous uh, buildings in, in Bath and, uh, and climbing on a wall and, um, and, and investigating um, a certain house um, that, that, that uh, features quite strongly in the story that uh, I, I was writing at the time. And a police car came by um, slowly um, and took a look at them and then went away and they thought, oh, that's the end of it. But then it returned. Um, and I think they, I don't know whether they fled the scene, but uh, as, as they told it to me, it was, yeah, oh, they did. Yes. <laughs> that, that was what happened. So, so we thank you. We waddled thank you away. Taking, <laughs> thank you for taking risks on my behalf. And, and also I do remember the tours very well. 
and the walks. To, thank you very much for both of you for being part of this. Cheers. Good evening. Thank you for staying up so late and uh, good night to both of you. Good night. Up. Oh. Technical problem. I knew one would happen. I, I hid my video too soon. Um, Larry, I'm going to pause for one second. Juliet's going to kill me to go off schedule really quickly. But since they mentioned the tours, I wanted to say a very quick personal story. I was actually lucky enough to come to Bath in 2005 with my late husband, David, and we were both such big fans of Peter Lovesey. We were on this mystery tour of Yorkshire and England, and we were such fans that um, we filed into the room and into our seats to hear um, Peter talk. And he started talking about um, uh, The Last Detective, the first book. And as soon as he started to move on about Diamond Solitaire, he said, and my second book, Diamond, and you know, he's written a bunch of books. So it took just a minute for him to come up with Diamond Solitaire. And David was so excited and so beside himself to meet Peter Lovesey that he went, Diamond Solitaire! They like, screamed it to the crowd while Peter was talking. And I will never, ever forget that moment as um, representative of our genuine love for Peter Lovesey and um, his, his books. So obviously um, a wonderful memory and the, the tour of Bath was fantastic. So hopefully in the future, if you can make it, I highly recommend it. Okay, moving on to another crime fiction legend, Lawrence Block has joined us. Lawrence Block is the author of more than 100 novels. He has received 12 Edgar Awards, including the Grand Master title, as well as numerous Seamus, Anthony, and other awards. So Larry, I will leave it to you. Have a wonderful toast. <clears throat> Thanks so much. It's an honor indeed to be <clears throat> called upon to say a few words this evening as we set about honoring Peter Lovesy on the 50th anniversary of his glorious debut. Peter, I wish I could remember exactly when it was I first met you. There are, in fact, a lot of things I wish I could remember, more every day. I just this week wrote the last words of a volume of a memoir and realized while wrapping it up that the sport of memoir writing is best undertaken whilst one still has a working memory. Oh. <laughs> no, never mind. Our first meeting was certainly well over 30 years ago, and I think the occasion may have been a mystery weekend at Mohonk Mountain House hosted by our mutual friend Donald Westlake. That weekend was already in the rearview mirror when journalist Jack Hitt recruited both of us, along with Tony Hillerman and Sarah Caudwell and, yes, Donald Westlake, to collaborate on a frothy confection of a book called The Perfect Murder. It was fun working together, although we did so from a distance, dispatching our contributions through the mails. Not with a mouse click, mind you, as it was some years before mice became capable of clicking, but with stamps and envelopes. My contribution to the book was, well, workmanlike. At least that's what the gentler reviewers had to say about it. Peter's, they all acknowledged, was positively brilliant. We'd know each other better by now if the Atlantic Ocean weren't in the way. And now that I think about it, I suspect our very first meeting might have taken place in neither Peter's country nor mine, but at a crime fiction festival somewhere in France to which we were both invited guests. As was Peter Chambers, not the fictional detective created by Henry Kane, but the English author who idolized Raymond Chandler and strove mightily to emulate him. Chambers never made much headway in the States because he situated his wisecracking private, private eye in New York, and the result did not fall harmoniously upon the American ear. But his books did well at home, as well they might, and in France, and it was there that he reported a bit of advice he'd received early in life from an older British writer. Take care of your backlist, the old gentleman told him, and one day it will take care of you. <sighs> Peter Chambers took this advice and assured us of its efficacy. And it would appear that both Peter Lovesey and I have profited by his example. And what a marvelous backlist you have, Peter. And how fortunate is the newest generation of mystery readers to have it awaiting their attention. As are all of us who find ourselves now with not only this splendid anniversary edition of Wobble to Death at hand, 
but a sparkling new Peter Diamond adventure coming our way in a matter of months. Well done, old friend. Carry on. Oh, thank you, Larry. Thank you. That's that's wonderful. Um, and it was, I think, France. I, I and I think the champagne was flowing, and it's it's understandable that neither you nor I remembers too much about it. But I'm pretty sure that's where we met first. And and I I do think I do seem to remember that Peter Chambers came along on that trip too. But thank you for your very kind words. Um, I, I'm I'm so thrilled that you were able to participate in 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 this uh, bonanza this evening. <laughs> thank you, Larry. Thank you, Peter. My pleasure. Thank you, Larry. Have a wonderful evening. All right. So. I can't believe we're, we're doing so well without technical issues. I've probably just jinxed us, but we're gonna, we're gonna move on. Next up, we have Peter Robinson. Um, Peter Robinson is the author of 27 novels in the Inspector Banks series, as well as many award-winning short stories. He has won Edgar, Anthony, McCavity, Barry, and Ellis Awards, among others. How are you this evening, Peter? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. It, it's great to be here. I'm just listening to everybody and watching the proceedings. It, it's, uh, it's great to see everyone again, but it just reminds me how we always used to meet so often at, at various conventions and festivals and things. Don't worry, anyone. I'm not going to tell any stories about <laughs> the things you got up to there. But, you know, you're, you're, they're safe with me. Um, but, you know, this is rather different. I'm, I'm not quite used to Zoom yet, though we've all got a little bit used to it in, 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 in these, this day and age. Um, and I also want to say, in, in a propos, some of the things that have been said earlier, I've never once wobbled in my life. <laughs> now, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> I have, I have, however, read Wobble to Death, which, which I loved. And I think it's a great tribute to, to Peter's writing that I, I read not only that, but raced through all the crib books, though I'm not a sports fan, <laughs> never have been. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I just love the books so much that, that, that I just had to read them. Um, it's rather, I, I'm on rather late, so I'm afraid that most of the wine has, has gone already. There's not a lot left to toast with. <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to say thanks very much for, for having me here. And, and this is, a, this is a, a wonderful thing to celebrate. And if you think of it, you know, all those years from crib to diamond, all the wonderful stops in between, how much pleasure it's given to so many people over so long a time, then it, it, it's got to be a really good feeling because people have learned a lot in, in, in the past few months, you know, how important reading is and how much it can get you out, make, you know, give you a bit of an escape. Um, and, and, you know, your, your books have, have been instrumental in doing that for so many people for so many years. So Peter, I would like to raise what's left of this saint Emilion and <laughs> toast you to Peter. Oh. Cheers. Thank, thank you, Peter. Two Peters. And, and I, I think I, I could almost have made the same speech about you and your, and, and your um, books uh, and, 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 and the series that I have followed and from, from the beginning and, and, and read and enjoyed uh, along with um, millions of, of, of other people. So you're bringing enormous pleasure to, to, to many of us in these tough times. Um, and thank you particularly for the very kind things that you've said this evening. Well, thank you, Peter, and thanks for inviting me. Good evening, thank you. All right, so I, uh, before I introduce the next author, I just want to thank the people at Soho and Soho Crime for putting all this together. I'm so happy to be hosting it, but um, I didn't do the work. They did all this work and it has been an absolute treat for me. I know those of you watching have enjoyed seeing um, the roster of authors that we've gotten to hear chat tonight. And of course, Peter Lovesy, but um, thanks again to Soho. And our next author is part of the Soho family. So we're going to be joined by Cara Black. She is the author of 20 novels in the New York Times bestselling Emile Duc series set in Paris, as well as the standalone thriller Three Hours in Paris. Hi, Cara. Hi, McKenna. And hello, Peter. Lovely to Hi, see you. Hi, Cara. 
Hey, and thank you so much for inviting me. I really feel honored with this stellar crew. Um, and I just want to say that um, I think the first time I met you, I was a fan at VoucherCon in Monterey. And you were with Liza and Michael. And you were actually down in the atrium of the hotel. And you and the three of you were like at a fountain or something. And my friends and I, we were listening out the window to what you were saying because we were so scared to actually go up and talk to you, um, you know. And then finally I said, well, we're at a fan convention. We can go and speak to them, you know. <laughs> so we went down and talked to you and it was the highlight of my convention. The first voucher con at Monterey, I met Liza, a huge fan. And <laughs> you, you were so generous and nice. And, I, and then later when I came home from this voucher con, I was offered a contract by Soho for my first book. So I was like, oh, there's something in the air, you know, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the hugest thrill, biggest thrill was um, when I got to go on book tour with you, remember? Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I know. I, I have to apologize for a few things on that book tour, but I was a newbie, I was thrilled and, um, I learned so much actually traveling with you, going to bookstores, McKenna store and all over. And I learned, you know, like taking airplanes. It was like this huge, it was what a pro does. You know, you are such a professional and you're so great with your readers. And I was just like, listen and learn is what people told me. But I will apologize because we were in Phoenix and I kept saying we had a day free and I said, oh, you, you probably remember. Peter, can we go to that Native American museum? And, and you were like, okay. And I made you get down on your hands and knees and roll out the corn in the mortar and pestle. And then we had to eat the, the corn tortillas. <laughs> you were such a sport about it. Um, what I also remember on that book tour was going to Boulder, Colorado. And remember there was that wonderful small, uh, independent mystery book story and it was snowing. We'd driven up there. I mean, it was just, it was a snowstorm. And I remember saying to you, oh, you know, nobody's gonna come. It's, you know, and he goes, well, this is part of, you know, the book tour and, you know, st still, you know, we can, we get into the bookstore. It was standing room only for you, okay? Everyone was thrilled that you had come. And it was, it was a lesson to me. And I was like, oh, wow. And you spoke with everyone and you were like, well, don't forget about here's a, here's a new author. I want you to talk to you. We're so generous and kind, but this deals with wobbled to death because the last man in your long line of signing was this young man who was wearing gym shorts, like in a snowstorm. And mm -hmm. he was like a, a, a member of the Walker. He came up to you with wobbled to death, his first copy and said, I've always loved this book. And I, you know, and I, and I was so thrilled that you were coming and would you mind signing my wobbled to death? And I was like, oh, Peter, you've written other books. Yes, yes, I've written. <laughs> oh, yes. I, but I remember, and you were so generous with him and kind and you, you know, and I think you genuinely love talking to people who've read your books or other authors. And so that's all I want to say. And thank you for taking a newbie on the road. I oh. really learned a lot. Oh. oh, Cara, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And, and I do remember that too. And I, I remember Boulder, Colorado, and the young, the young man you spoke of um, yes. was there to, as a runner. And right. he was actually Steve Jones, who was the world record holder for the marathon at that time. Um, and so it was a special thrill for me to meet somebody unexpectedly coming along with his copy of Wobble to Death. Okay. Um, so there we are. Yes. Yeah, so that was that was lovely for me. And so uh, here we are. I'm toasting with our the you know the Santa oh, book that you yes, edited uh, last year. That's okay. right. Oh yes, our Christmas book for Soho. Yes. Right. Right. Santa's got to do what a Santa's got to do. So, cheers, oh, people. Thank you. <laughs> cheers. That's wonderful. Thank you again, Cara. May we do more tours when 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 the world is back to rights again. You know it, you know it, yes. And I want to come to Bath and go on that Crescent tour. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you. Good, good night, Cara. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, so I would be a terrible bookseller if I failed to mention that we're actually going to have an event with Cara 
and Jasmine Imock, uh, both Soho Press authors coming up, I believe, Tuesday night of next week. So if you love Cara Black, you love Soho authors, which I always tell our customers, there is a guarantee of quality crime fiction with Soho. So if you want to see more of Cara, tune in Tuesday night and you'll also learn about one of their new authors. But back to Peter. So we're about to be joined by um, Bronwyn, the publisher of Soho Press, and she is going to toast Peter. Good evening, Bronwyn. Hi, how are you? Thank you so Great. much for this. It's been so fun to sit here on mute, just laughing and clapping silently alone. It's just uh, been so much fun for me. I'm going to go away and leave you to it. Oh, hi, Bronwyn. <laughs> hi, Peter. Peter, in the decade that I have run Soho Press, it has been my great honor and privilege to call myself your publisher, as it was for my mother, Laura, before me, I know. Um, you know, bringing your books to your fans and your readers on this side of the Atlantic has been just a huge badge of honor for Soho Prime. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for entrusting us with your babies and bringing them, bringing them out into, into the world, birthing them to the world. Um, you know, you are, you're one of the most prolific and highly decorated crime fiction authors ever, and rightly so. I mean, your, your books, they delight us, they make our heads, my, our brains hurt, they surprise us time and again, which is not easy if, you're, if you do what I do, to be surprised every time. Um, and that's just wonderful. But um, you know, in addition, to really reading and loving your work, I have loved over the years getting to know you and going to author dinners and VoucherCon and awards events and um, you know and getting to to meet your family and Jacks and your your kids and your grandkids and seeing that side of you too. It's it's been really really wonderful. And when Louise Penny was speaking earlier, just the way she talked and how so many people tonight have talked about your generosity. Um, that is something that I have absolutely seen over and over again, um, just giving your time and advice, but only when requested and, you know, blurbs, these things all take time and you manage to produce a book a year when your computer doesn't eat your manuscript, but we won't talk about that. Um, and it's, I really don't know how you do it. I am in awe. I'm in awe of you. Um, and I think that this, I, the idea for doing the Peter Loves Eve first crime novel contest was really indicative of that generosity, just reaching this milestone and wanting to sort of pay it forward. And, and I feel like you really have found a fresh, new, exciting voice in Eli Craner. And I, I just hope uh, I, you know, if, if he, if he attains even a fraction of the success and goodwill that you have over your career, he will be doing very well indeed. And I toast you. I am very honored to, to call you my friend and I wish you so many more books and success. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bronwyn. Thank you. Um, one of my pleasures has been to see your career take off as a, as a writer. Uh, and you, you keep me rather quiet about the fact that you are a, are a successful author, but uh, that's, that's marvelous to be both a publisher and, and an author. That's, that's wonderful. And, and um, I, I thank you for nurturing my career um, and taking over after, I mean, I, I met Laura first, your mother, and, and, and you, you took over so smoothly. And there was a time when, when I was rather worried and I thought, oh dear, what's going to happen now? Um, but, but you stepped in and, 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 and you've been a wonderful publisher for me. And in total, I've been with Soho Press for 21 years. So that's another sort of landmark. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that I can last a little longer. It probably won't last another 21 years, but a, a few more. We can go for it, we can try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So I think we've reached the point in the evening where um, the great man himself will speak. Uh, Peter, I understand you have a few things you'd like to say this evening. So um, would you like me to stay here so you can pretend you're talking to me or you want me to go away? Oh, it'd be nice to see a face there. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm here. A friendly face. Exactly. Um, thank you very much, McKenna. And, and uh, I, if I may at this point just say um, th that I'm thrilled that Murder by the Book t took over this um, th this evening um, and, and staged it so well. Um, all my visits to your bookstore have, have been wonderful. Um, I, I nearly always am taken out for a lovely meal afterwards as well. Um, and and um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a joy. It's a joy. And it's a great bookshop. Houston. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. So friends, readers, fellow writers, booksellers and publishers, what can I say? This has been an evening to treasure in my memory for the rest of my life. I thank you all. Each of you who has clicked into this virtual extravaganza as well, everyone who spoke so warmly and especially McKenna and her wonderful colleagues at Murder by the Book and Bronwyn and Juliet and the team at Soho Press, my publishers for the past 21 years. But I'm not sure I recognize this nice, charming, gentlemanly guy we've been hearing about. Let's have some balance here. The Peter Lovesy I know is a grouch who shuts himself away for hours and can be overheard shouting foul language when the writing goes wrong. He lives in squalor, books thrown on the floor, desk piled high with bits of paper. Um, his garden is a disgrace. He never washes the car. He's regularly caught speeding. He refuses to use a cell phone. He's half deaf and shouts at people. And you should hear what his long suffering wife, Jax, could tell you. As for his writing, it must be enjoyed by some people, but if you ever see him at a book signing, sitting at a table between Jeffrey Deaver and Louise Penny, and look at their lines and his, you know where he stands in the ratings. So, why have I bothered all these years? Why do I write? Each book is, is like climbing a mountain, but with one big difference. I do it because it isn't there. From Wobble to Death onwards, my, my books, I've been very fortunate by the, in that my books have been published in America as well as in, in Britain. Um, but the odd thing is, to me is that it's with British spelling. And I sometimes wonder how irritating that must be to uh, American readers. So I'm, I'm going to finish with a story about the American writer Dorothy Parker, surely the wittiest woman of the 20th century. One year she visited Britain for a book tour. And when she arrived at Southampton Dock, she was met by her British publisher and she asked to see her schedule. Now he showed it to her and, 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 um, and said, incidentally, um, uh, Miss Parker, um, over here in Britain, we don't say schedule. The word is schedule. And Dorothy Parker said, Oh, skit. Thank you, everyone. And take care. I need you all. <laughs> that's wonderful. So I think that's going to conclude our evening, but uh, bear with us for a minute. This may take just a second, but I'd like for all the people who participated in the toast tonight to come back on. Um, you can mute yourselves, unmute yourselves, whatever, but um, I fail. I don't, I don't have a glass. I'm the only one who doesn't, but let's all come back on and um, toast one last time to Mr. Lovesy for a, an exceptional career, an exceptional gentleman. Um, there's genuine affection from all of us here, and we are so happy to be celebrating you tonight. Cheers. 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 And thank you all so much for joining us. If you missed the beginning of this, come back later. You can watch it on YouTube. But um, for now, we're going to all say good night. Thank you again.